So here are the must-watch videos from the wingsound.com community. Right, these videos come straight from our members who've uploaded them to the community. And if you create videos, you can upload yours too for free at wingsound.com. We start with Ian Golden, who shows us how to optimize our Mac before a live DJ set using Automator. This is my Automator workflow. I am going to first quit all applications except the program that I am using to record this screencast. We are then going to run an Apple script, which will toggle airport on or off, launch system preferences, and then watch me do is a uh, recording action. You can use the record button up here and it will record uh, mouse clicks. And there's a whole bunch of mouse clicks in here that you'll see in action in a minute. Then quit uh, the application system preferences and then launch Audio Hijacked Pro, and then I have an Apple script which will launch Traktor Pro. I find it to be a little bit faster when launched via Apple script. So that's enough. So here we go, ready? We are going to open up. I use Quicksilver to open programs. We're gonna type in Optimize Traktor Pro, and I'm gonna hit Enter, and you can watch it all happen with one click. There we go. First, we're going to see in the, up in the corner, toggle off airport, and now it's going to move really fast. It's changing my audio preferences now. It's going to quit the program. And there's Audio Hijack Pro. And if you give it one second, Tractor Pro. So there you have it. Fully optimized Mac in what, 10 seconds maybe? Clunk00 explains sidechain compression in Cubase. Right, so uh, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to uh, place the compression on VStation 2 because that's where I want to be affected uh, by the um, input of the kick drum. So I'll just uh, go here. I know it's compressor. So one thing you'll notice here, there's a uh, new button uh, which is new to Cubase 4.1 uh, and it says activate sidechain. So I'm going to click on that. You can probably just about hear that at the moment. If we make the uh, effect a bit more, the compression a bit more pronounced, you should be able to hear and it's affecting the attack of the Serato Tutor teaches us how to assign MIDI controls in Serato Scratch Live. What you have to do is uh, obviously click on MIDI, and then before you click on one of the buttons to assign them, you have to hold the control and alt key down on your keyboard, and then click on the auto loop length that you want to assign, and you'll see the gray box pop up, and then click your mouse, and you will see it says control plus alt plus click uh, unassigned to MIDI input. Uh, that means these are the control plus alt modifiers and then just press whatever button you want to assign All right, so now it's going to be assigned and then you just repeat the process now for the other auto loop links you'll See if you don't hold control or alt down and you just click on it You'll see it doesn't say the control plus alt message and if you hold control down you'll see control click or if you um, Hold alt you'll see alt click and if you hold control and all at the same time and then click the button, you'll see control plus alt click. And that's the keyboard shortcut for loop rolling. So you must hold control plus alt down before you press the button to assign it, and then press the button on your MIDI controller. And that will assign loop rolling to that one button. And so let's just map out the rest of them. They're not all of them, I'm just gonna demonstrate these four. Okay, so as you can see, if it doesn't say control plus alt click, then you didn't do it right. You have to make sure it says that. And then, so let's just uh, play a track and just play around with it for just a little bit. 